Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning back into the video. Much appreciated you guys taking a little time to do so. And today I'm going to have a little bit of a discussion, give you guys some uh, sort of some tips and overview on why most bass anglers just suck with fishing uh, spy baits. They're just not very good at it. And uh, I'm going to sort of give you my opinion on that and sort of share with you guys some tips that might uh, make you not suck so bad at a spy bait fishing if you think you do. And if you uh, if you if you think you're pretty good at spy baits, maybe you might pick up a few tips here from what I've learned in my own personal experience with them. But uh, real quick before we get started here, just wanted to catch up on a few weeks housekeeping tips. I um, just wanted to send a weekly reminder if you guys are interested in any of our winter lake map breakdowns, uh, just go over to fishthemoment.com, check out the, our full catalog winter map, map breakdowns. <clears throat> Johnny's got a bunch of offshore maps. I got a bunch of shallow maps. We got fall maps, we got spring, summer, winter, just a great resource uh, for getting your uh, lake map information. And also just a reminder to, to you guys, if you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to the channel if you hadn't had to do so. Uh, we're come, trying to get hit that 50,000 mark and uh, hopefully we can do that maybe by the first of the year. We've got a big giveaway coming up. Uh, a lot of really good stuff in this giveaway and all you have to do is be subscribed to win it. So uh, much appreciated if you can just hit that subscribe button. Okay, guys, let's talk about the spy bait a little bit. Um, I think that probably the spy bait, in my opinion, is probably one of the most misunderstood lures in fishing. It's like, um, it's it's pretty situational, for, I, I will grant you that. But for the most part, there's been quite a bit of tournament success on it, but it hasn't equated into the bait really taken off. It's like there's been, I'm going to guess there's probably been a lot more tournaments won on a spy bait versus a whopper plopper. But a whopper plopper, it's like everybody fishes the thing and everybody throws it and, you know, catches fish on it. And they don't with the spy bait. And I think a lot of it is just because of the inherent way that you have to fish the bait. A lot of people don't want to take the time and the patience to do that. So I'll start out right off the bat why most people are not very good at the spy bait. And that's because they get in a hurry. A spy bait is a slow technique as far as, uh, you know, fishing it right, specifically in the uh, colder weather months. The, you know, they catch a lot of fish on a spy bait up north in the summertime for smallmouth, but primarily the bait is known for um, sort of the late fall to the pre-spawn. That's when, that's when it works really good, like uh, in most lakes across the country, and that's when I've had my most success on it. But I've caught fish on the thing even at Lake Mead in the summer. They'll bite it all year, but the window of time for me is when those fish start to get suspended in the fall and winter time of the month. So talking a little bit about why a lot of people struggle about it and things you can do about it is when you're fishing a spy bait, um, like I said, this thing has got to be fished slow in order to catch fish on it because not only does it have to be fished slow, but you have to use the right equipment and the right technique. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and then I'll talk about type of areas to fish. Guys, the main key on a spy bait is you have to go super light with your line. I, most of the time I'm using four pound tests. Now six pound tests, to me, it's even on the bordering on a little bit heavy, on the heavy side. It's like when you put four pound tests, I'll use four pound tests, Seaguard and Vizx, or six pound tests, Seaguard and Vizx, most of the time four, you get a completely different feel with the bait. Not only that, you can cast it farther. Another thing about that, all you dudes out there that use braided fluorocarbon, don't do that. Use straight fluorocarbon. I do for, you guys know I, I don't use braided fluorocarbon for anything, but if you guys are just one of those hardcore braided fluorocarbon guys, put your braid down, go straight floor on this thing. It's super critical in order to get the bait to work right. Four pound test fluorocarbon line, some type of like six and a half to seven foot, um, medium light action spinning rod with a soft tip on it. This is another big key on there. You've got, you can't have a spinning rod that has a stiff tip on it. I'll use the uh, Mega Bass Hedgehog or uh, you know something like that that's got a fairly soft tip on it. Four pound test line. The next thing about that is the key on this bait is like once you, once you get it down there in that uh, strike zone with light line, the spinners on the thing actually help the bait just sort of wobble a little bit through the water, like a minnow, a little bit, sort of vibrate like that. It's extremely, extremely subtle. And I found that you can't get that subtle wobble with it that you need like that. If you're using specifically over six, you can't use eight on this. You, like I said, four to six pound line is key on there. 
And this bait, when you look at it, it doesn't, it does not look that great. It looks like a topwater prop bait, but when you get it in the water, the spinners to me are secondary to the fact that the bait will actually just t barely wiggle like that. And this is very, it duplicates a minnow a lot because if you guys have seen a minnow in the water, they don't dart around much. A lot of times they're just, they're just barely swimming like that through there. And when you're talking about clear, cold water where the bass are completely sight oriented, that is what, that's when this bait shines, is when it's a sight bait in super clear water that they can detect or de detect and see that, that slight variation, that slight uh, wiggle like that. I think a lot of these bass that bite a spy bait, I think they study it for quite a long time before they hit it. And uh, like I said, the main thing about that is like they'll throw it out there, um, count it down to the zone that you sort of feel the fish are at, and then just slowly crank that that real handle spinner i'll just barely slowly crank it like that once in a while i'll put a little twitch on it like that slowly crank it like that and that whole time that bait is just barely moving just like through the water column super slow like that and then you get a little twitch and it goes like that goes a little bit more maybe goes another five feet a little twitch like that and that's when they usually hit it <clears throat> but i think a lot of times a lot of people they think they have to reel that bait at a certain speed to get those props turning. And to me, it's not the prop as much as just the side to side wiggle on it. Um, another th thing with that is like I said, you gotta make long casts. Um, long casts is the critical on this thing because if you're fishing in the winter time of the year, and most of the time I'll talk about how I fit, where I fish a little bit more. Most of the time you're talking about trying to keep it in the strike zone the longest period of time. And most of the time your strike zone is gonna be where you feel that maximum depth of the fish that are suspended are at, you know, for and the, the maximum depth of the fish are suspended. Say, for example, if I feel based upon me graphing a lot of places and I see a lot of bait fish activity that's suspended like 15 feet down over 30 or 40 feet, that is when I really try to concentrate in that zone. And the longer cast you make with this thing, the longer you can keep it in that zone. And once once you get it down and once you see the, the fall of it and get it down to where that bait's at, I like to keep my rod tip high and I keep the, the, the retrieve at a pr fairly consistent speed. And that way I'll sort of stay in that, in that water column, that same water column, the whole cast, cast back like that. Second with that is the, and we'll talk about colors, but second about this is the areas that you need to fish this thing. There's two type of areas that I normally fish the spy bait in during the cold months of the year. And first one is, is main and secondary points. Um, main and secondary points are probably the top type of water <coughs> that you can fish a spy bait in simply because that's where a lot of fish suspend in the winter time. A good rule of thumb is if you guys are catching bass on a jerk bait, uh, doesn't matter if like I said, it's points or whatever. If you're catching them on a jerk bait in clear, cool water, clear, cold water, you can go back and catch those same fish on a spy bait in that same situation. Spy bait fish and jerk bait fish set up and bite very similar. Um, the difference with that is the mood and the personality of the fish. If a bass is chasing, if it's a little bit more aggressive, they're gonna go for a jerk bait. If they're not chasing as much uh, and they're not quite as aggressive, a lot of times, you know, the spy bait's better. Um, also, the spy bait will work. Um, it works in a probably a wider range of water clarities than a jerk bait. In my wintertime jerk bait fishing, you know, I, I like, you know, four to six foot of visibility and a spy bait will work. I've caught them down into two, three foot of visibility in the same areas, probably because of the flash of the propellers on there. Maybe that's what draws them in from a little bit more. But again, I, you know, I prefer clear water, but they will bite it in a little bit more stained water. So main and secondary points are the main places to fish them. The second type of areas I like to fish them in are back in the ditches and the uh, middles of the coves. If you go back like in a major creek arm that you're fishing and you get back in the cove arms off of those major creek arms, I like to get my boat in 30 to 50 feet of water and cast right down the middle of those coves um, about two thirds of the way back in the cove and do the same thing. I'm just counting it down to where I think those fish are and just slow reel it back in. So I really think that the biggest mistake why a lot of people, there's two things that why a lot of people are no good at, at spy bait fishing. 
Number one is they don't fish it much. And number two, they simply fish the thing a little bit too fast. And if you're getting bit, um, you can slow down. But say, for example, if you fish five or six points with a spy bait and don't get a bite on it, it's hard to keep throwing the thing because there's a lot of other baits that actually look better in the water than the spy bait and that you know that you can cover a lot more water with. Because to me, a spy, a spy bait fishing, um, it's almost as slow as fishing a Ned rig or a shaky head if it's done right. If you, if you fish this thing as slow as it needs to be fished, um, in my experience, I can cast, like I said, an eighth ounce shaky head or a, a tenth, one tenth ounce Ned rig, and I can make about the same number of casts with that. But at times, like I said, it's just absolute deadly. Another time that it works real good that I found out is um, early and late in the winter <clears throat> when the water temperature is still in the 50s. If you get one of those days that's sort of nasty and overcast and cloudy, specifically if the water is really clear, this is a really good time to fish spy bait. And also if you have a lot of smallmouth in your lake. If you have nasty cloudy conditions and you've got a big smallmouth population, say like a place like Lake Cumberland, uh, or Bell Hollow Lake, or obviously any of the places up north, big smallmouth will hammer that thing in the wintertime on those nasty days a lot better even than a jerkbait. And finally, the colors, guys. There's two primary colors that I use uh, based upon the sky conditions. Um, I'll use some type of a translucent color like this, and then I'll use a metallic finish. If um, it's fairly bright out, not much wind, uh, maybe the fishing's a little bit tough, I go to the translucent like this, but if you got those days out there that um, say you've got a lot of wind, um, you've got partly cloudy conditions, but specifically if it's windy, um, that's when I like the uh, metallic finish like that. Now, um, the metallic finish will also work um, if it's rainy too, um, but it's, if it's really, really dark and rainy, in order for them to hit the, the clear sides like this, it's gotta be extremely clear water. Sometimes, uh, I found out that maybe a flatter finish when it's cloudy will work a little bit better, uh, you know, than the metallic on there. But that's, that's, these are the, my two favorite colors right here. I can't even remember the name of them, but this is, these are the two that I've done the best on. I can think there. So anyway, guys, that's, that's probably just a few tips for the spy baits out there. Um, don't get in a hurry when you're fishing them. Uh, go down to four pound test line and don't, don't make it more complicated than what it is because you can basically, like I said, go in those same place of areas that you're catching them on little swim baits and jerk baits or even Alabama rigs and throw the spy bait and, and catch a lot of times even better quality fish than you can on anything else. So it's, um, just hasn't really caught on though. I mean, I don't, I don't really understand it. I, I've had days out there where, um, I really wanted to get going on it. I really wanted it to work and I'm catching some fish, but I didn't catch as many as what I felt I need to. Um, I've also had days out there where it outproduced the jerk bait. I've had days out there that they don't hit it. It's like anything else. It's situational. It's a tool, but it's one that you should probably spend a little time getting good at because um, there's just not a lot of people that talk about it. A lot, not a lot of people fish it or talk about it or to get excited about it. The guys that do are, that are the ones that sort of keep it quiet. You don't hear a lot of people talking about it. That's why these baits up here, these spy baits, they were dominating those smallmouth tournaments up on the Great Lakes uh, for years up there. Nobody would talk about it until people started seeing people winning tournaments on the thing. So give them a try. Like I said, just put them on, you know, go to that four pound test line, get out on some main lake points, and at least you'll get some bites on it and maybe get some more confidence in it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tip and we'll be back later soon. See you.